Want 10% off your MTG singles? Go to Flipside Gaming and enter the promo code POWER in all caps to receive 10% off $10 or more. Want to see extra videos? Sign up to our Patreon and get access to our Discord, early access to videos, Patreon-only videos, and much more. Need a better life tracker? Download the Gauntlet app for your phone. It keeps track of your life totals, counters, win rate, and so much more. It's free, so go check it out. More info is in the description. Thanks for watching. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to Playing With Power MTG, where we play with the most powerful cards in the most powerful formats. Another episode is here, and we are doing a Commander 2019 showdown. That's right. We took each of the Commander 2019 decks, cranked them to 11, and now we will see how they will do in a competitive environment. A quick thanks to all of our Patreons for their support. We really could not do this without you. If you'd like to become a patron, please check out the link in the description below and check out some of the perks our patrons get. You can also show your support by liking this video and subscribing to our channel if you're not already a subscriber. It really helps out a lot. Let's start out by showcasing our fighters this evening. First, we have Garrett piloting Volrath, the Shape Stealer. We knew that Assault High Commander would be best suited in his hands, and he solicited the help of the infamous Shaper Savant to brew an interesting competitive list. Garrett's opening hand consists of a Horseshoe Crab, Nurturing Peatland, Skull Clamp, Flusterstorm, Boreal Druid, Dread Return, and a Command Tower. Next, we have Ryan piloting Anya Falconrath. Ryan piloted Anya during the season finale, so we knew that this was his deck to have. He has since revamped the list to his own creation, and we will see how it does. Ryan's opening hand consists of a Red Elemental Blast, Archfiend of Spite, Exotic Orchard, Marsh Flats, Bloodhall Priest, Rite of Flame, and Insatiable Gorgers. After that, we have Folger piloting Atla Palani, Nest Tender. Folger loves to brew disruptive decks, and he has a special place in his heart for Naya so we knew that this deck would be a perfect fit for him. Folger's opening hand contains a Bountiful Promenade, Birds of Paradise, Chrome Mox, Elvish Mystic, Soul Ring, Noxious Revival, and a Lavala, Keeper of Silence. Finally, we have Mike piloting Elsha of the Infinite. No one does battle better on the stack than Mike, so we knew that this would be the perfect commander for him. Mike's opening hand contains an Island, Mox Diamond, Brainstorm, Mana Crypt, Ristic Study, Mana Drain, and a Mox Opal. Without further ado, let's dive right in. Ryan wins the Death by Butter challenge and gets a start us off. Ryan plays a March Flats for turn. He passes. Mike plays an Island for turn. He casts a Mana Crypt. He then follows up with a turn one Ristic Study. This is immediately a big problem at the table, especially for those who haven't even played yet. And Ryan responds by cracking his March Flats to fetch up a Badlands. Ryan then saves the day by casting a Red Elemental Blast countering the Ristic Study. Mike plays a Mox Opal and ends his turn. Folger plays a Bountiful Promenade. Super happy that Ristic isn't on the board, he casts a Chrome Mox and printing Elvish Mystic. He then slams down a Birds of Paradise and a Soul Ring. Feeling pretty good about his board state, he gives the turn to Garrett. Garrett plays a Command Tower for turn. He casts a Boreal Druid and passes. Ryan plays an Exotic Orchard for turn. He casts Rite of Flame, adding two red to his pool. He then casts his Commander, Anya Falconrath. He passes. Mike plays a Scalding Tarn for turn. He casts a Cursed Totem. It is becoming very clear very quickly that Mike is definitely a threat to be dealt with in this game. Ryan, about to lose the value from his commander, activates Anya, discarding Archfiend of Spite. He untaps Anya and draws a card. He activates Anya again, discarding Bloodhall Priest, Insatiable Gorgers, and Gemstone Caverns. With nothing else, he passes priority and Cursed Totem resolves. All through, Mike passes the turn. Folger, very unhappily, plays an Avacyn's Pilgrim. He ends his turn. Garrett plays a Nurturing Peatland for turn. He casts a Skull Clamp. He activates Skull Clamp, targeting Boreal Druid, killing it, and drawing two cards. He plays a Mox Diamond, discarding Flooded Strand. He ships this turn. Ryan plays a Wooded Foothills for turn. He ends his turn. At the end of Ryan's turn, Mike casts Brainstorm. He draws three, doesn't like what he sees, puts two back on top, and then cracks the Scalding Tarn to fetch up a Steam Vents into play tap. During his upkeep, Mike loses his Mana Crypt trigger and takes three damage. He plays an Exotic Orchard for turn. He casts his commander, Elsha of the Infinite. He passes. 
Folger, with not much else to do right now with the Cursed Totem on the field, attacks Garrett with his Avacyn's Pilgrim. He ships his turn. On his turn, Garrett casts a Hapless Researcher. He activates his Skull Clamp, targeting the Researcher, killing it, and drawing two cards. He ends his turn. At the end of Garrett's turn, Ryan cracks his Wooded Foothills for a Blood Crypt, into play tapped. Looking for a way out of the Cursed Totem lock, Ryan plays a Blast Zone for turn. He does nothing else, and passes. Mike plays an Island for turn, and also passes. At the end of Mike's turn, Folger casts a Worldly Tutor. Garrett responds by casting Dispel, countering the Tutor. On his turn, Folger again attacks Garrett with his Avacyn's Pilgrim. He passes. Garrett starts off his turn by tapping his Nurturing Peatland to cast Carpet of Flowers. Mike responds by casting Swan Song. Garrett responds by casting Fluster Storm, targeting Swan Song. Mike pays for them. With that, Carpet is countered, and Garrett gets a bird. He equips Skull Clamp to his bird and passes the turn. At the end of Garrett's turn, Ryan adds a counter to his Blast Zone. Ryan untaps, looks at the board, decides to keep mana up, and passes. During his upkeep, Mike loses his Mana Crypt trigger and takes 3 damage. He plays an Ancient Tomb for turn and passes. Folger draws for turn and immediately slams down his first usable red source this game, which is a Stomping Grounds, into play untapped, pain 2 life. He casts Dockside Extortionist. The creature enters and he creates 5 treasures. He sacks one of his treasures to cast Gamble. With two cards in hand, he hopes the Gods of Chance will be on his side. He searches up a card into his hand and rolls the dice to see what he has to discard. He then flips over Mirror Entity, which is what he searched for. <laughs> With the Red and Tomb resolved, Folger passes the turn. Garrett casts a Channeler Initiate. He Skull Clamps it to draw two cards. He plays a Gemstone Caverns for turn. He casts a Mana Ball. He passes the turn. At the end of Garrett's turn, Ryan blows up the Blast Zone, destroying all two CMC permanents, which includes the Cursed Totem. Also at the end step, and with Anya back online, he activates her, discarding Senseless Rage, untapping her, and drawing a card. He activates her again, discarding Grave Scrabbler and Muck Drub, untapping and drawing each time. Ryan plays an Arid Mesa for turn. He casts Dark Ritual, adding three black to his mana pool. He casts Entomb. Entomb resolves, and he fetches up a World Gorger Dragon into his graveyard. He cracks his Arid Mesa, fetching up a snow-covered mountain. He casts a Demonic Tutor, fetching up a card into his hand. Now, done shuffling his library over and over, he casts Slaughter Pact, targeting Elsha. Elsha dies, and Ryan follows up by casting Animate Dead, targeting the dragon in his graveyard. Mike responds by casting Mana Drain, targeting the aura. Ryan is ready, though, and casts Pyroblast, targeting Mike's Mana Drain. Mike, always with the answer, plays the last card in his hand, which is a Pact of Negation. Unfortunately out of answers, Animate Dead is countered, and Ryan passes the turn. During Mike's upkeep, he pays for his Pact of Negation. He draws a card for turn, and passes. Folger starts off his turn by casting Limbala, Keeper of Silence. Things are looking pretty bleak over on Ryan's side, and Folger follows up by casting his commander, Atla Palani. He ends his turn. On Garrett's turn, he taps his Nurturing Peatland to cast his own commander, Volrath. He equips Skull Clamp to his bird. He moves to combat and puts a negative one, negative one counter on his bird through Volrath, killing it and drawing two cards. In his second main phase, he equips the clamp onto Volrath and passes the turn. During his upkeep, Ryan pays for his Slaughter Pact. He draws his card for turn and passes. During his upkeep, Mike loses his Mana Crypt trigger and takes three damage. He recasts his commander, Elsha. He ends his turn. Folger plays a forest for turn. He casts Kiki Jiki, Mirror Breaker. He attacks Garrett for three with Limbala and passes the turn. On his turn, Garrett wants to dump some of his wind counts from his hand into his graveyard, so he casts Windfall. Folger, not wanting to enable Garrett's graveyard combos, casts Noxious Revival, targeting Dread Return in Garrett's graveyard. Garrett responds by paying two life and casting his own Noxious Revival, this time targeting World Gorger Dragon in Ryan's graveyard. The revivals resolve, cards go to the top of their libraries, and everyone discards their hand and draws six. He plays a Dryad Arbor for turn. He moves to combat, putting a minus one minus one counter on Folger's Avacyn's Pilgrim, killing it. He attacks Folger with Volrath. In response, Folger activates Atla, making an egg. He then activates Kiki Jiki, making another egg. He blocks with his original egg, killing it, and triggering Atla. He reveals cards from the top of his library until he reveals a Perforos, God of the Forge, and puts it onto the battlefield. With nothing else, Garrett moves to his instep. At the end of Garrett's turn, 
Folger's second egg dies, and he flips into a fine horn elves. It enters, and everyone takes two from Perforos. Ryan plays a mana confluence return. He casts a mana crypt. He passes. During his upkeep, Mike loses his mana crypt trigger and takes three damage. He plays a Mox Diamond, discarding a Hallowed Fountain. He casts a Merchant Scroll off the top of his library through Elsha's ability. He holds priority and casts a Soul Ring off the top of his library. He holds priority still, tapping Ancient Tomb to cast Grim Monolith off the top of his library. After that, the stack resolves and he searches up a Cyclonic Rift. Mike looks at the top of his library through Elsha and really likes what he sees, so he taps a bunch of his rocks to float mana and then casts Dramatic Reversal off the top of his library. Reversal resolves, and he untaps. He then casts Rest in Peace. Everyone groans, especially Garrett and Ryan. It resolves, and everyone exiles their graveyards. Mike passes. During Folger's upkeep, in order to force Mike's hand, Garrett casts Nature's Claim, targeting Mike's Grim Monolith. In response, Mike casts an overloaded Cyclonic Rift. In response, Folger activates Atla, making an egg, and everyone takes two from Perforos. He also taps Kiki Jiki, making a copy of the egg, and everyone takes an additional two. Then Cyclonic Rift resolves, and all opponents bounce their boards. Then Mike's Grim Monolith is destroyed, and Mike gains four life. Folger, finally in his main phase, plays a Spire Garden for turn. He casts Mox Diamond, discarding Bloodstained Mire. He casts Chrome Mox, imprinting Finehorn Elves. He casts Soul Ring. He then follows up with a Magus of the Moon. Knowing that hurts Mike's supplementary colors, he casts Counterspell, countering the Magus. Next, Folger casts Kosali Pride Mage. He finishes up by casting Birds of Paradise. All rebuilt, he passes the turn. Garrett starts off his turn by casting Ponder. He looks at the top three, rearranges, and draws a card. He casts a Mana Crypt. He follows up with a Skull Clamp. He clamps his Dryad Arbor, killing it. When Garrett goes to draw two cards, this is when Mike reminds him that Rest in Peace prevents dies triggers and he doesn't get to draw. Bummed out, Garrett casts a Devoted Druid. He ends his turn. Ryan plays a City of Brass for turn. He casts Mana Crypt. He recasts his Anya. With Linvala gone, he sees his chance to resculpt his hand, so he activates Anya, discarding Call to the Netherworld, Gibbering Descent, Biting Raid, Blood Mad Vampire, and Nightshade Assassin, all untapping Anya and drawing. He casts a Lotus Petal for turn, and passes. Mike starts off his turn by casting Verity Circle. Ryan, just not being able to catch a break this game, responds by activating Anya, discarding Snow-Covered Swamp, and drawing a card. Next, Mike casts Personal Tutor. He fetches up a Fabricate onto the top of his library. He then casts Fabricate from the top of his library through Elsha. He fetches up a Sensei's Divining Top into his hand. He taps his Ancient Tomb to cast the top. He uses the other floating mana to spin the top, looking at the top three. He attacks Garrett with Elsha, and passes the turn to Folger. Folger plays a Temple Garden into play untapped, paying two life. He recasts Kiki Jiki. He then casts Academy Rector. He passes. Garrett starts his turn by casting Brainstorm. He draws three and puts two back on top. He plays a Mox Diamond, discarding Ancient Tomb. He plays a Windswept Teeth for turn. He cracks it for an Underground Sea. He taps his Nurturing Peatland to cast Volrath. He moves to combat and puts a minus one minus one counter on Kiki Jiki. In his second main phase, he taps Devoted Druid to cast Mana Ball. He puts a minus one minus one counter on Devoted Druid to untap it. He taps the Druid again to equip Skull Clamp to Volrath. He passes the turn. Ryan plays a Bloodstained Mire for turn. He passes. At the end of Ryan's turn, Mike spins the top. During his upkeep, Mike loses his Mana Crypt trigger and takes three damage. During his main phase, he spins his top again. He casts Serum Visions from the top of his library. He draws a card and scries two. He plays an island for turn. He then plays a Mana Vault. He follows up with a Felwar Stone. All wrapped up, he passes the turn. At the end of Mike's turn, Folger taps Kiki Jiki, making a copy of Kasali Pride Mage, and then sacks it to destroy Rest in Peace. On his turn, Folger recasts Perforos. In response, Mike spins the top to look at the top three. Not doing anything else, Perforos resolves. Folger recasts Limbala. In response, and to get in their activations while they can, Garrett activates Volrath, making it a copy of Kiki Jiki. Ryan activates Anya, discarding World Gorger Dragon and drawing a card. Linvala resolves, and everyone takes two through Perforos. Folger attacks Garrett with Academy Rector. Garrett immediately takes it, knowing better than to block that creature. Folger passes. 
During his upkeep, Garrett loses his Mana Crypt trigger and loses 3 life. He casts in Tomb. Mike responds by casting Muddle the Mixture from the top of his library, countering the spell. Garrett moves to combat and targets his negative one, negative one counter to Kiki with Volrath. With the ability on the stack, Folger responds by tapping Kiki, making a copy of Kasali Prime Mage and triggering Perforos. Then Kiki dies. In his second main phase, Garrett equips Skullclamp to devote a druid, killing it and drawing two cards. He casts an Arbor Elf. He clamps away the Arbor Elf, drawing two more cards. He then casts Folger's favorite card, Gilded Drake. Folger, not knowing what plan is going to be disrupted when he takes a creature, decides to sack one of his pride mages, targeting Mike Sensei's top. Mike, not wanting to lose the best card in his deck, responds by casting Opt from the top of his library. He holds priority and casts Mystical Tutor from the top of his library as well. Mystical Tutor resolves and he fetches up a Force of Will onto the top of his library. Then Opt resolves and he draws his Force of Will. Mike then activates the top to draw a card. However, with the activated ability on the stack, Folger responds by sacking his other Pride Mage, targeting the top again. Mike, once again with the answer, casts Chain of Vapor, targeting his own top in order to save it. Ryan responds by casting Mog Salvage with its alternate cost, targeting the top. Mike responds by casting Force of Will, exiling a blue card, and paying one life. Ryan responds by casting Imp's Mischief, redirecting the Force of Will to itself. Mike, getting it from all sides and out of answers, decides to let it go through. Imp's Mischief resolves, Ryan loses 5 life, Force of Will fizzles, Mog Salvage destroys top, the other abilities fizzle, Mike draws his card through top, and finally, with all of that completed, Gilded Drake resolves. The Drake enters, and Garrett exchanges control of it and Linvala. With nothing else, Garrett passes to Ryan. Ryan plays a Sunscorched Desert for turn, and pings Garrett with its ability. He then casts Dance of the Dead, attempting to go off again. Everyone passes priority, and Dance of the Dead resolves. The World Gorger enters, and its Enter the Battlefield ability goes onto the stack. Mike responds by casting Tear, destroying Dance of the Dead. This basically removes Ryan from the game, so he floats the rest of his mana in response. All of his permanents get exiled, and he puts Anya into the command zone. With his floating mana, he casts Skirk Prospector and recasts Anya. Essentially out of the game, he passes turn. Mike plays an island for turn, and surprisingly, passes the turn as well. Folger, wondering what Mike is up to, plays a Prismatic Vista for turn. He casts Inferno Titan. In response, Mike activates Verity Circle, tapping Academy Rector and drawing a card. He activates it again, tapping Volrath and drawing again. He casts a Talisman of Creativity from the top of his library. Then Inferno Titan resolves. Perforos triggers, killing Garrett. Titan triggers, and he directs one damage at Mike and the rest to his own Academy Rector. Mike responds by casting Swords to Plowshares, targeting the Rector. Rector exiles, Folger gains one life, and Mike takes one. Folger then casts Atla Polani, triggering Perforos. He passes. Ryan, still technically in this game and not wanting to waste time, draws a card and immediately passes. At the end of Ryan's turn, Mike casts Time Twister from the top of his library. In response, and in order to shortcut, Folger cracks his Prismatic Vista to fetch up a forest. Then everyone shuffles their hands and graveyards into their libraries and draws a fresh seven. Also at end step, Mike casts Enlightened Tutor, fetching up a Sensei's top onto the top of his library. During his upkeep, Mike loses his Mana Crypt trigger and takes three damage. To avoid losing too much more life, he untaps his Mana Vault as well. He plays an Island for turn. He casts a Cloud Key. It resolves, and he chooses Artifact. He then casts his top for free. Knowing the game will essentially be over, Ryan activates his Anya as much as he can, attempting to find an answer. He does not find anything, he passes priority, and then the top resolves. Mike taps his top to draw a card. Folger responds by casting Nature's Claim, targeting the top. Mike responds by casting Mental Misstep from the top of his library. Folger responds by tapping his Birds of Paradise to cast Pyroblast, targeting the misstep. Mike, from the top of his library, cast Dovin's Veto, countering Pyroblast. With nothing else, Top's ability resolves, and Mike demonstrates his loop. Mike continues to draw and recast the top for free, drawing his whole deck and raising his storm count and prowess count to over 50. He then casts Grape Shot, killing Ryan and destroying the rest of Folger's creatures. He then attacks Folger with Elsha for the win. 
Ladies and gentlemen, what a game. Congrats to Mike on his win. Everyone constantly put pressure on the board, but in the end, Mike had the right answers at the right time. Folger's deck was good at applying stacks to slow the board down while advancing his board state, and he was in the best position to win had Mike not taken it first. Garrett's deck wasn't getting the cards that he wanted at the right time, which unfortunately happens with elaborate combos that create cards that are otherwise dead outside of the combo itself. Ryan's deck was strong with answers, was resilient to hate, and attempted to go off twice. Unfortunately, Mike had the right answers both times, and the last one essentially left Ryan out of the game. The most valuable player was Mike. It didn't matter what people threw at him, he always had an answer. He piloted the deck with masterful skill and waited for the right opportunities to strike. The most valuable card was Sensei's Divining Top. So many resources were spent to fetch it, cast it, and remove it. This one CMC artifact definitely deserves its reputation. If you want to take a look at our deck lists, check them out in the description below. Well, that about wraps it up for this episode. Tune in for our next match when we will find out who will be king of the competitive EDH table. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you next time.